is uh, what's conveniently in these these jugs, and um, inside of these four is is water. And one of the things that we know is that today, 2.5 billion people, 30 percent roughly, 36 percent of the world's population today does not have access to this or live in water stressed areas. What's even more amazing is if you live in Canada and you're on what we call city water or you're on a municipal water supply, uh, they take four of these, toss one of those back into the ground and they deliver about 75% of that water before they've lost most of it. If you're in the U.S., I'd have to cut one of these in half. They, in the U.S., we lose almost 30% of all the water we put into a pipeline. In Mexico, I'm going to have to toss this one aside, and you're going to get about 50% of all the water that they're treating. So what we do as, as a global community outside of Singapore, who seems to have this thing well in her hand, is we take a very precious resource. We put a tremendous amount of money into that resource to clean it, to get it out of the ground, to transfer it, to get it to you as a consumer, and you as a producer, and you as a manufacturer. And along the way, we just happen to lose quite a bit of that. And that's what we really want to talk about is the opportunities that that presents to you and also the challenges that that presents to you. One of the things I wanted to say is since the day Thomas Edison solved light or solved darkness, um, no one has ever confused the General Electric Company as a nonprofit organization. Uh, it may surprise you, but we are for profit. Um, and General Electric didn't get into the water business because it felt good. Certainly, that's, that's a great benefit of that. We didn't get into the water business because we saw that our water footprint was a huge challenge. In fact, um, Google our name in water, and you'll end up with some river stories that, that we probably don't want to talk about. So we haven't always been the greatest keeper. Uh, but in 2005, our chairman gave us a challenge and said that the environment is going to be one of the next great areas for us to invest. And as we began to look at that, the initial thought was, oh, well, we can build turbines, we can, we can capture the air, we can uh, make better airplane engines, we can make uh, locomotives that can move more product. And that ultimately began us to rethink our organization. And as we looked at our supply chain, we realized that we had a number of risks. We had built factories in areas that are in water risk uh, areas. We had suppliers that were polluting the environment. We had a, just a tremendous amount of opportunity, both internally to do that, to clean that up a little bit, and to build out better products and partners with our suppliers and our customers. So what we did is we set three goals. The first one was to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. The second one was water. Third one is energy intensity. And I don't ever have to explain energy intensity to anyone. They get the idea of saving energy, especially if you're in an area where energy is exceptionally expensive. When I was in Mexico, I was working with GE uh, Plastics in Tampico, Mexico. And they were getting huge surcharges because they were running during peak hours. And one of the things that we did is we began to look at what the profile of that plant was. And we found that they had just this long string of air compressors. And as we began to question, we said, hey, why do you have so many air compressors? And they said, well, we keep running out of air, so we just add one more. And what was interesting to that is the fact that they were leaking air. They were leaking compressed air. And as they began to close up some of those leaks, what happened was, one, they picked up a lot of productivity, but they were able to then take that energy, get off of the grid during peak times, and they saw major savings in energy. In the US, we don't see some of those peak loadings because we have a, a relatively inexpensive energy source, although it's not what it once was. But people understand that. When I get to greenhouse gases, everyone understands that having big smoking stacks outside is just not the best thing to go do. But the reality is you can scrub those. You can do a lot of things that reduces greenhouse gas emissions out of your facilities. And there's a lot of viable solutions around that. Obviously, they're at a cost, but there's a viable solution around that. The one that we always explain is why did we choose to reduce our water? Uh, and that number represents a roughly 15% of our water consumption globally. And that's uh, that 15.3 billion gallons of water 
was used throughout our, our organization. And these are 2010 numbers. Um, at that time, we were exceeding the water goal. Um, it's more like 12 now. We're going to easily make the 15. Where we got that from is really important to understand. And some of the challenges that we had in reducing that number is what I want to convey back to you, because I've spent a lot of time working inside of the dairy industry, working inside of food and beverage industries, working inside of many of the places that you have, taking these practices and applying those to our customer base. And sometimes it works out really well. And in some cases, I've got some great pitfall stories uh, to let you know about. When we look at the operations, I, I kind of wanted to just divide it. And there's really four areas. You have operational process excellence. And I think everybody has gotten this. You know, you can Six Sigma your way to that. One of the stories that I like to tell, though, is we were working with uh, Toyota. And Toyota has to be one of the greatest um, lean manufacturers I've ever ran into. They managed to burn down their water plant at the Corolla factory. Now, how you burn down a plant full of water is an amazing feat. <laughs> I mean, it takes, it takes a lot to burn down a tank of water. Try, I, believe me, I've tried a few times. And what it was is that their pretreatment of that water was just horrible. And they were getting a ton of chemicals, a ton of painting chemicals back into their, into their water system. And it only took a spark. And eventually, they had largely paint in those tanks. That affected the production of the Corollas their largest sale, or the Camry, their largest product in the US was shut down for about four or five weeks. And they were kind of limping their way through that because of the water that they could pay, manage. So when you look at how the environment affects production, you've got to include that. It's not something that you just sweep off to the EH&S officers. It's not something that the physical plant guy has to worry about. The other side of that is you've invested a tremendous amount of money into boilers, into cooling towers, into cooking equipment. And all of that is cooled by water. And most of that picks up chemicals that you buy, anti-corrosives, antibacterials, cleaning, chlorine, all of these things that you're paying most likely a contract for to keep those assets protected. When those assets are not protected, then you've got an expensive bill. I did some work with uh, Lazy Boy. And they have 14 furniture factories uh, across the US. And Lazy Boy was trying to figure out, they had some plants that were going through cooling towers about one every three years. They had other ones that were 25 years old. And they just couldn't figure out why that was. And they would go do the chemical tests. And the chemical tests would come back about the same. And they were going through. And the equipment's about the same. And it, eventually, what they had to do was put in a practice of let's look across the enterprise at water quality, real time, understand what's going on. What they found out is that some of the plants, they would take leftover furniture, paper products, cardboard, throw that in, and burn it. And it was actually getting a very corrosive environment. Those are the type of things that you've really got to begin to understand is what's going on at that operational level? And do you have the visibility at a management level to understand those are going on? Because all of a sudden, it's really easy to go, you know what? We need another air compressor. We're going to continue to add air compressors, as they did in, in Tampico. The, uh, the other thing is, is quality. And I was working with a pharmaceutical manufacturer in Holland, Michigan, uh, Perigo. It's a very large pharmaceutical um, provider to Walmart. And they are roughly maybe, maybe 2,000 feet from the outlet of a water treatment facility. And uh, they get lake water out of Lake Michigan.